Are you going to tell people to... Yeah. Thank you everybody for coming. Uh, if everybody could stand up and get to their seats so we can begin.
you can sit. Good morning, church, and thank you for joining us to our teen-led service. My name is Noah. I'm Allison Tupper. <laughs> and welcome to our teen-led service. I just want to start off by saying welcome to all who are joining us from out of town, uh, all our guests and distant family. We love to see you. Please stand up if you are from out of town. Last night, um, all the married couples had a 70s and 80s dance party. <laughs> um, should we be Just kidding. Okay. Um, <laughs> Women's Day is on April 27th, and the registration is open until April 18th. So make sure you sign up. Women's Day is always a great time for women to just fellowship and grow closer together in God. Um, um, the Hawaii teen... Um, Hawaii Teen Camp registration is open. Please check your emails. Some um, extra information was sent out this last past week. Um, the Teen Camp will be for the 11th, the current 11th, excuse me, current 8th through 11th graders, and it is from June 3rd to June 7th. And remember, the last day to sign up is April 30th, and I know most of you teens might not want to go, but it will be an amazing experience. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So please go, please go. Uh, the sign up is a first come, first serve basis. So make sure you get there quick. Uh, registration is $350, but if you need installments, uh, please talk to, oh yeah, if you need to pay installments, talk to Nick or Shelly Galang. The Eyes at Sea um, International Month of Missions campaign is coming up in this coming May. Please welcome Uncle Jay Grasso. Uh, he's going to be leading the Hoops for Hawaii program. Thank you. It's great to see all the teens up here. They're doing a great job. Um, okay, I just heard that my slide is not going to be up here, so forget about that. Uh, we have 60 days to go for our, uh, by the way, I, I'm sure some of you are happy that Match Madness is gone, right? Yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, uh, 60 days to go. So that's the progress. The progress is really encouraging because we, just try to imagine a progress chart here. Uh, we're, uh, we are 25%, we've made up to 25% more money raised. So it's really exciting. I uh, want to hold up uh, uh, Jackson and Ryan and Roger. Uh, and I want to share a scripture uh, just to kind of keep this in context with what we're doing. This is all about uh, God's always at the uh, center of everything, right? So it says in Matthew 9, 37, 38, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Uh, big, uh, where's my scripture? I only wrote... Okay, the harvest is plentiful, but the work is a few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his field. Amen. So, uh, you know, um, the, there's just a lot of uh, victory in, in uh, asking God. You know, the, whether we share our faith uh, or whatever we're doing in our lives, right, we're always, God's always working for us to ask him to do something for uh, in the kingdom, right? And uh, there's just a lot of victory in just asking. That's something I want to share is that, uh, you know, asking God, just get voicing it to God, right? And then asking God, right? We need to get it out there. That's what prayer, that's why prayer can be a struggle, right? So uh, the reason I bring that up for now is that in, when, we, when I, uh, like I share with my boss, I've been feeling very busy. But I share with my boss, I just blurted out, told, 
told her I was doing the uh, Hoops for Hawaii, raising money for Ronald McDonald House, and uh, she was just so encouraged that she uh, said she would give money, you know. It really connected me with uh, her. You know, she, she's, she wants to help the poor. She wants to do something. That her job, she said education. She wants to do something. Just good to connect with people and let them know what you're doing. It's good, you know what I mean? And I think it's just like what we do uh, in Sheridan about church. You know, we, we have such good news in so many ways, right? And we just need to talk. So I would just share that uh, with, you know, Hoops for Hawaii, uh, just asking. I asked my boss, and I said, the, it wasn't the result. Maybe she would have, uh, what if she reacted negative? That would have been discouraging, right? But I, it, the victory is in asking, right? There's the victory. So, uh, so as far as the progress we've made, we are up to uh, 25%. We have got about a uh, quarter of the way, no, halfway there on the volunteers. And um, yeah, so we're going to have a, a huddle tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks to everybody. Uh, and uh, keep, keep plugging away and get the victory in asking. We're going to have that huddle tonight at 7 p.m. for anybody volunteering uh, or playing, or if you have questions about it. One of the things we do have is we're going to have a children's basketball clinic, which is really cool. It's a free clinic for all the kids uh, on the island. So if you know of a child that might, it might be good for them to come, sign them up for that clinic. Uh, if your child, you know, if you're in the uh, fellowship, Sign up your child for the uh, clinic. But uh, anyway, that's all I got. Thank you. Yeah, you heard it, folks. Uh, sign your kid up. Make them shoot hoops. <laughs> okay, so as a reminder, uh, Geo Services will take place next week, Sunday, April 21st. And the week after, April 28th, will be hosted back here at OVC at 9.30 a.m. Let's welcome the song leaders back up to the stage. Sorry, can you guys stand up again? <laughs> my 
Okay, what's up, church? Um, well, it's so weird. Oh my gosh, it's like come back and then now I'm speaking. Um, Aloha, church. Um, let me put up my notes app. Oof. Um, okay, Aloha Church. My name is Kian Vienna. Um, I was born and raised um, in this church. Many of you are my uncles and aunties. Um, I want to thank you guys for, you know, being like, oh, the emotions are getting to me. Being the village that raised me, you know. Um, yeah. Okay. Good news. Um, so I was born and raised on Oahu um, before my family moved to Seattle in June of 2021, where my parents are ser currently serving um, in the city region of Seattle, um, where there are, um, oh, that's, yeah, in the city region of Seattle. Um, it's been so encouraging to see God work um, in all his ways, you know, um, bringing, and bringing and building the family in Seattle. Um, uh, my brother Ty, he's preparing for nursing school um, for
for his final final two years of college, it's crazy. Oh my gosh, like that's so crazy to me. Um, he's been a light for many uh, students at Washington State University. Go Cougs! Um, and he's seen uh, many of his friends get baptized, and many others who are very close to making it. You know, I just went to the campus retreat in the Northwest, and I was able to meet all these people that have been getting baptized uh, while he's there, and the people he's reaching out to. Um, I just think like God is working um, in Wazoo in Pullman, and it's so encouraging to see like how many people just are searching and finding God. You know, um, I'll be graduating from Ballard High School uh, June fourteenth, um, and I'm planning on attending either UH, hey, go Bulls, or Seattle U, or Boo. Or my personal favorite right now, it's at the top for me, uh, Whitworth University in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah, I just am grateful to God um, as he's led me in, like, being a light to my friends at the new school that I was placed at. Um, I've been able to see nine of my friends start, like, attending church, and they're coming out, and um, two of them are wanting to get, like, started with studying the Bible. Um, and in January of this past year, I was able to baptize my friend, Linnea. You can stand up. Yeah. yeah. So she studied with my mom and many uh, other sisters, also Sophie Amamora, she studied with. And it's been really awesome to see you grow um, and see God just, like, work in our lives. Um, yeah, I want to thank you guys for this opportunity sh to share what the cross means to me today. And we're going to start off. Um, with just one scripture, um, 1 John 1, 7. And I'm going to read it. My dad, he helped me, like, go over it, um, my sharing. But he said, oh, make, maybe you should read the easy English version. <laughs> so here we go, here we go. But when we live in a right way, it is like living in the light. God is always in the light. So if we live in the light, we share together in the life which God gives. And when Jesus, the Son of God, died on the cross, he saved us from all, our, all of our sins. The blood of his sacrifice makes us clean. So the cross means living in the light and fighting the darkness that comes at you in your life. Um, I grew up hearing this passage a lot, you know, um, with in Ohana groups, you know, when my dad's prepping for a lesson or a sharing. Um, and I think, like, looking back, you know, and currently, it's really hard for me to live in the light. You know, my purity and my honesty are constantly being challenged by dark, the darkness that Satan has um, and the world, you know. Um, before making the decision to make Jesus Lord of my life, I was deep in, dark, deep in the darkness, you know. I was being deceitful. I wasn't being honest with my parents. You know, I was chasing after relationships. You know, I was chasing after, like, idolizing swimming. Um, I was idolizing video games over, like, homework and school. I was even idolizing school, but video games over, like, most of it. Um, yeah, but before making Jesus Lord um, last April, or, yeah, yeah, last April, but pretty much, oh, my gosh, a year ago, um, <laughs> I was deep in sin, and I ended up getting like look, like high key blackmailed by someone on the on a social media platform, and it's crazy because just the week before I was on my dad's phone and I signed into the social media platform, like to like look at some posts or something, and he was signed in on my phone. So when this person was messaging me, he was watching TV downstairs, and he he looks at his phone; it's blowing up right now, and I'm like in this conversation with this person. And he's like, what is happening? And he goes upstairs. And I was totally just caught in my sin. You know, when you're like, I was just like this. I was like, Dad, I, I don't know what to do, Dad. You know, I was like on my knee, like on my feet. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Um, but as I like chose the darkness over the light in that situation, um, it put me in that vulnerable position and like, where I was at the lowest of my lows. Um, but, like, being able to be at that moment and, like, knowing that moment, I think that put
pushed me towards God even more because I was like, man, all these things in my life I'm running to. And then I just get like all I get from all these worldly things is just wor worse stuff, you know. Um, so thankfully, I was able to like talk about it with the people I was studying with. And I was able to bring God into the situation and God worked his magic, you know, and um, he was able to like, I was able to see like that he's the only one. He's the only one that can fill me up. It's not all these random things in life. Um, and my choice to go to God um, and like have my life of sin die or my, yeah, my life of sin die to me. Um, it brought me closer to God, and it allowed me to have the opportunity to choose Him. And in May, on May seventh of last year, I decided to get baptized and Woo! join the family of God. And from this, I just, you know, I know when um, I choose to live in darkness, the darkness can eclipse the light forever, and it can keep you from seeing God and being in a relationship with God. It separates you. But I want to encourage all of us and even myself, it's the daily reminder that I have to have for myself is to do our best to live in the light and to share and be vulnerable um, with the people around you. And I thank you for all the aunties and uncles who have uh, been a great example to me here and in Seattle. Um, yeah, so I just, I plead with you to, if you haven't Talk to with someone, um, just be in the light and talk, be, be vulnerable if, with someone if something is on your heart, if you have a heavy load, um, and even talk to this person and pray with them because then you're praying to God and you're talking with God and he lightens the load. Um, yeah, thank you for listening and let's pray, uh, let's pray um, to appreciate Jesus' choice to die for us and to allow us to have a chance in the light. God, thank you for the opportunity to live in the light. <laughs> Please guide us to live in the light no matter where we've been in darkness, whether it be the highest of highs or lowest of lows. Um, in Jesus' name, amen.
Uh, good morning, church. So I'm actually really excited to come up here and speak again, if I'm be honest. The last time, the next time I thought I was going to come up here, I was be like 30 or something, but <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm not. But so like again, my name is Carson, and hopefully you could tell I'm a part of the teen ministry. <laughs> but for those who don't know me, I'm a junior in high school, so I got still one more year to go. And I was baptized, baptized along with Jade on October 13th, 2023. But anyways, I'm incredibly thankful for the opportunity to stand before the church once again. Um, it's always been a dream of mine to express um, my outlook of God and admiration of him in front of the church. And to have it done twice at such a young age is absolutely like a dream for me. Um, so, but before I start anything, I want to express my gratitude for, to Nick, Gabe, Uncle Kevin, Luke, and their patience for studying the Bible with me. I know my, out, my outlook then was very different from how it is now, but I appreciate the patience and for also showing me everything God has done for me. So communion often focuses around giving back to God, but for me, offering, it seems more monetary. Um, for me, money talk isn't the most exactly the sacred topic, and I know most people don't really want to come to church and hear about money and giving, but just like any other church and other, other thing, uh, the church needs financial support. So giving isn't, well, sorry, let me read. Um, giving is important, but you're not obligated to give, although it does greatly help the church. <laughs> so to start off, like I said, I'm in high school, and I was previously jobless. But before I made any money, I felt like a beggar, unable to give back to God in any <laughs> meaningful way. Because the idea of giving to God seemed to be more focused on giving money than anything else. But as a teenager who only received money twice a year from Christmas and birthdays, <laughs> not blowing it on like silly stuff in the first week is hard. So I often found myself watching the offering basket go by, taking from God but never giving. Until I stumbled upon my all-time, this is my all-time favorite scripture, 1 Corinthians 10.31. So if you want to turn your Bibles there. Okay. So whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. So I really like this scripture because I love to eat. And when God told me that if the more I eat, the more glory to him, amen. But if anything, um, this scripture confronted me deeply. It showed me that even as a broke, naive teen, I could still give back to God by dedicating my actions to glorifying him. This scripture really shows how simple our giving can be and that even the necessary tasks we need to live in life can glorify God's name. What I really feel is great from this scripture is the motivation and change it gives us. It makes me want to do the best in everything I do. Because when other people see me, I want them to know that I'm glorifying God. And this is something that I think we could all use in our day-to-day -day lives, whether at school, church, or at the gym. Um, and scripture period, has had the most impact on my life than any other scripture. So previously, when I was a freshman sophomore in high school, I wasn't exactly in the shape I am now. I was um, 210 pounds at my peak and around 32% body fat, so I was very big. Uh, some of you might remember me but when I was then, but we don't, we don't got to remember that. <laughs> so if anything, I was a really big kid, and I was bullied for how big I was. But now, I'm appreciating that God taught me to forgive them, and if anything, I'm grateful for the tough love. But <laughs> throughout God's scriptures, he was able to give me the dedication and discipline and knowledge to even change. And the idea that glorifying God gave me even more motivation to start working out. And because of that idea, I was able to drop my body fat 14% and cut down around 50 pounds in a year. And, and each... Second, I spent at the gym, and each calorie I counted, I dedicated to glorifying God's name and hopefully inspire others to go to God and change their life. So I want you guys to understand that you should dedicate everything for the glory of God. There are many other examples of teens glorifying God, Luke and Keen helping out with the AV, Hannah and Jade both on the worship team, Lauren helping organize our Christmas plays, and Blaze and Noah always with the teen events. But I always want to thank all the teens for being here today and helping out in every way you can. So to wrap this up, let's remember that giving back to God isn't just about monetary contributions. Even if we can't give financially, God desires our attention and worship. 
Each small act, no matter how insignificant it may seem, can still glorify his name. We should all strive to seek many opportunities to glorify God in our daily lives, knowing that he notices and appreciates our efforts, no matter how small they may seem. So let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the opportunity to express our love and admiration for you and from the church. I deeply appreciate all the mercy and life you gave us throughout everyone's life, and I dedicate our lives to glorifying your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, while the trades are getting passed, we're going to sing the next song before the lesson. Sorry. Can we have everyone please stand? Sorry. Cry out in silence, so will I. 
salvation. God of salvation, you chased down my heart through all of my fears and pride. On a hill you created the light of the world, abandoning darkness to die. Sing it to the other church and as you speak. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. Where you lost your life so I can find it. If you left the grave behind you, so will I. I can see your heart and everything you've done. Every part designed in the work of our color. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart a million different ways. Every prayer. Child, you died to say If you gave your life to love them, so will I Like you would again a hundred billion times Who oh, a measure could amount to your desire You're the one who never Amen. You may be seated. All right, test one, two. My biggest feedback from last time was I wasn't speaking into the microphone. So hopefully that will not be an issue this time. All right, let me just find my thoughts a little bit, you know. All right. But good morning, church. For those who don't know me, my name is Gabe Montavias, and I work in the team ministry as an intern. <laughs> Woo! So hype. So I have the honor and the privilege of sharing the message with you today, but even the highest honor of having a couple of teens come up a little bit later just to share about their stories and their journeys with God. But before we get any further, let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Father, thank you for this time just to have the teens, just to express all the talents that I learned about last week. It's just been really incredible to see their hearts to serve and just the development into who they are going forward. It's very nostalgic for me knowing that when I was a teen, I was also doing the worship stuff and et cetera. Then I retired and now I'm back. So it's really cool just to come back and just see these teens step up in just an incredible way. Please bless this service. Your spirit fills the room. Amen. Amen. So once again, it's been a very inspiring and encouraging time just to see these teens express like their talents and really stepping up. And believe it or not, it was actually their idea. Back in November, they approached me like, Gabe, hey, we should do a teen-led service. I'm like, yeah, you know, why not? Sure, of course. You know, well, I'll think about it. But they were persistent over the years to come, and I'm glad to say that they actually followed through. But also just to lift up, you know, Nick, Soma, and Jace have been helping us so much just to coordinate all the worship, stuff in the back room, doing all the behind the scenes stuff, and it's been really incredible. And if I look a little bit antsy, I actually teach for a living. So like if I, I'm usually walking around the classroom to make sure that people in the back are paying attention. So if I like do this, like I'll try to keep myself uh, sta uh, stationary during this part. But just real quick, um, just thank you, church, for allowing these teens to have a safe space just to put these, I guess, traits and qualities and talents into practice. It's never too early to invest into their development, their leadership, because they are the next generation of leaders. And we can see that clearly through just how they continue to give to God and to you guys today. But as mentioned before, um, we're going straight into the lesson. Um, I had this, like, before the sermon 
night before the sermon kind of curse in which you have everything written down. Then at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m., you just want to change everything. <laughs> I'm like, oh, boy. So my dad checked up on me last night at 11 p.m. But it's okay. I just had to rearrange a couple of thoughts because, as mentioned before, these teams will be coming up and sharing their stories so to make sure they have enough time just to express their thoughts freely without feeling rushed. So to get straight into it, so let's open up your Bibles to Psalm 77, 11 through, 11 through 12, one of my favorite verses. Oh, it's already up there. Thank you, Canva. So it says, I remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. So just for the next 10 seconds, I actually want us just to sit here in silence and just remember what the Lord has done for you guys. These kind of scriptures are always my favorite. Like growing up, I've always been told that I am an old soul in a young body. But I've always been offended by them. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm so fun. I'm so hip. Like, I say all these funny jokes. Like, I'm not old. I'm young and hip, you know, just like people my age. But the truth is, it is true. I am an old soul in a young body because I'm only 23 years old, but I look back on my life very often and actually reflect. Like every morning before reading my Bible or praying, I actually just get my cup of coffee, put on some worship instrumentals, and actually just scroll through my phone for like 10 to 15 minutes, looking at old pictures, new pictures, and just remembering what God has done for me. Because it just always puts me in this posture of like humility, especially in this fast-paced world in which we're always focused on the next thing, or I always got to go to work, or got to go to this teen event. But when I actually take the time to slow down and remember what God has taken me, it just makes me feel at ease. Like even preparing like the teen-less service and all the stuff behind the scenes, I'm like, oh my God, like I woke up like three times last night. I'm like, oh boy. But, (laughs) But I just remember how far God has taken me in the past, all the things he delivered me through. I'm like, okay, it's going to be okay. Because actually the Bible mentions over 500 times the theme of remembrance. Like, remember the Lord. He took you out of Egypt. Remember, like, remember me as you pass down, like, the blood and the body. Like, we always got to remember, which is kind of countercultural. I think sometimes even as a Christian in which once we get baptized, we're like, all right, the, the old is gone. The new is here. I'm going to forget everything I ever done before getting baptized and just look ahead, which, I mean, there's some truth to that. Like, don't look back on your sinful lives but always look back just to see how far God has taken you because it just changes everything. Like I'm always amazed whenever I do this and it never gets old, at least not yet. But because like back when I first made Jesus Lord, like almost a decade ago, I had no idea what God had stored for me. And a verse that I like to illustrate this is actually in Matthew 13, 44. Oh, is that up there? Oh, there it is. All right. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold everything he had and bought the field. And that's kind of it. Just one, like, like 20 words. But I wonder what this man had found in order just to sell everything he had in an instant. Like, was it diamonds? Was it gold? We're not really sure. But what, one thing we do know is that he actually sold everything he had to obtain it. And then actually kind of just ends as well. We're not really sure what happens to the man afterwards. Like, did he just, like, die the next day? Or did he live a long, healthy life and and retired? We're not really sure. But I think it's written this way purposefully to place our own stories into the narrative. Because we all kind of started the same way, those who have been baptized. Like, we find this treasure. We're super excited. We learn more about God. We get baptized. Life is awesome. We're more involved with the church, making relationships. We're putting our talents to glorify God. But then the rest is kind of, it looks differently for each one of us. Like my journey with God looks differently than probably all these teens. And that's actually a good thing. Our understanding of God is so unique and so personalized, but yet we all start in the exact same spot. But in terms of this man, 
I thought it'd be cool just to get a little creative on just to speculate what he might have done. Like maybe, like, he came from an outside country or a town or community. He has no friends. He's probably by himself. But all he has is this treasure and this land. So what do you do with this land? You build your new home. And you start building your life from the ground up. And there's no longer any restraints or concerns of what's going to happen. Like, all your concern is building something new for yourself. So I'm assuming he left everything behind for a fresh start, as mentioned before. Maybe he came from a neighboring country or community, and he needed a job. So maybe he went to the nearby town, maybe he became a carpenter or something, maybe a barista, and got involved in the community. And from there, maybe he found a nice church to settle into, build connections, build relationships. And maybe through this new faith that he has, he has the opportunity to build a family. He gets married, has kids. Now the land that he owns is now a home for many generations to come. And he has everything he could ever want. A family, friends, career, faith, and even more. All because he stayed close to the treasure. And that moment, that one decision marked the rest of his life. And I'm sure you look back on that moment regularly thinking, man, if I haven't bought that land, what I have around me now would not exist. And that's something I think about regularly when I think about my testimony that everything that I experienced would not exist without Jesus. Especially being baptized at a younger age, like, sure, like, when I think about it, there wasn't much, I don't have this crazy, like, testimony that I was a criminal, got out of jail, and, like, you know, like, went to rehab or something like that. But I had the luxury of actually growing up with the faith and actually building my life from the ground up, not just as a emerging adult. I guess I'm an adult now. Young adult, but also as a child of the Lord. And I actually have an illustration for this. Let me grab it real quick. I have this bar of gold. Woo! And the first thing I want to say is, thank you, church, for your free will offering. It's been really awesome to receive one of these. All the interns got one. It's been really cool. Thank you, Carson, for your contribution. You know, I'm expecting another one. No, it's kidding. It's fake. It's fake. Oh, I know. That would be, I'd be canceled if that, was the, if that was the case. But gold is a precious metal, which means that in theory, it's going to gain value over time. For those in finance, like I understand, it's not like compound interest or things like that. So just play, just bear with me. In theory, it's going to gain value over time. So let's say I bought this gold one day for $5,000. It's still going to be worth the exact same thing tomorrow, next week, next month, maybe even next year. Like if I just look at it from a day-to-day perspective, the value won't really change. But instead, if I hang on to it and commit to having it around, Maybe in five years, 10 years, 20 years, it might be worth $10,000, $15,000, $20,000. Like the more I hold on to it, the more I get to see its value increase over time. Like I've been a Christian for 10 years. Oh boy. Like I was baptized when I was 12 years old in California. And back then when I found this treasure originally, like I gave everything I could to obtain it. Everything a 12-year-old is able to give up. (laughs) Like, the biggest temptation at the time was probably, like, premarital hand-holding, you know? Like, I was even tempted to hug this girl once during class. Like, I was a true, like, delinquent. Like, God really, like, saved me from a lot of things. But despite being so young, when I decided to follow Jesus, I knew this commitment was something valuable and something that I wanted for the long term. And upon getting baptized, like, I'll be honest, like, not much really changed. Like, I didn't, like, glow up or have a third eye in, like, enlightenment or anything like that or start speaking in tongues, rising from the waters of baptism. Like, I went to school the next day <laughs> as if normal. I was still involved in my church. I mean, I didn't see, like, anything change immediately after that. But after 10 years in the faith, I'm proud to say that commitment has gained value and is worth much more to me now than it did back then. My understanding of God has matured and grown in so many ways. Like, just like the man in the parable, like, that one decision has marked the rest of my life. 
like the place I call home, being here and being in front of you guys today. That's because of Jesus being my Lord. The friends I've met and currently have, especially those in the back like Micah Mirashiro and Matthew Oliphant. Love you guys. The friends I currently have deciding to go to APU during college because of the college ministry that's big and it's strong and it's thriving, just so I make sure that my spiritual growth is actually being taken care of. The job that I currently have in serving the youth because of the spiritual mentors that have been part of my life growing up and just knowing the value of just having just an older buddy just to ask for input from, to just guide you, to be your friend. And that's why I'm so passionate about just being with the teens being like a high school teacher right now, even though my kids drive me crazy. crazy. <laughs> but like all the wonderful ministries I've been a part of from all the places I have lived and I currently serve, like my goals, my ambitions, my dreams and aspirations were all the build around my faith and this treasure that I have found. Amen. And yes, there's been many hurts, disappointments and confusion along the way, but also a lot of growth, blessings and grace. Like almost half my life has been God-centered and I can't imagine my life any other way. Because I look in front of me and just see all that I have, but I also look back and knowing how far I've come and all the steps in between. And I just can't help but to be grateful. And I hope a lot of you guys can relate, especially those who are a little bit older than me in the faith. Like when you first made Jesus Lord on that wonderful day, I'm sure you had no idea what God had in store for you. And I hope that you look back often thinking about, man, like, I just can't believe God has done that. And for those who are younger in the faith, maybe thinking to yourself, do I really need to be a disciple for 10 years to understand that kind of faith? And the answer is yes. (laughs) Just because things get better with time, you don't really know what's in front of you until you're just with it long enough and you see it grow, you see your experience. Like, my understanding of God has changed like a million times, especially during COVID, like, just a lot of time to think to yourself. So you don't really know what to believe. And especially going to a Christian college as well, they purposely destroy your faith just to rebuild it once again. But I'm so grateful for that. It was a conversation for another time. But I know along the way, especially those who are young or old in the faith, there's definitely been challenges along the way. Like even the men in the parable, I'm sure that there's probably famine that happened once in a while. Maybe you didn't get a job once in a while. Maybe you got laid off. He was in the tech industry and just like, you know, had massive layoffs. Who knows? Went through a pandemic. Like, we're not really sure what this man has gone through, but what we do know is that he just held on to this treasure so dear. And even though there's challenges along the way, following Jesus is not easy. Even those who are with him in person even struggled. Like, you saw all these miracles in front of you, and yet you still struggle to believe in Jesus. And then that's, that's okay. It's okay for us to struggle through these moments. And before I call up a couple of teens to share, there's one verse that during troubling times I like to visit. So let's turn to Galatians 6 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Like, following Jesus is very challenging, and we just can't escape that fact. That might sound depressing, but there actually is hope on the other side of the tunnel. And sometimes when I read this verse, I think about receiving some kind of reward or blessing. If I just hang on just a little bit longer, then God will bless me in X, Y, and Z way or bless me in these areas of my life. But I think when reflecting about this verse a little bit deeper, I think one of the greatest blessings to reap is the blessing of clarity, and actually understanding how God worked through those challenges to bring me where I am today. Because I just picture God saying, like, just like, don't give up, like, just hang on a little bit longer, and one day you understand what I am doing, and then you'll believe me even much, even much more. And I think one of the biggest examples in my family that we shared a couple of times is Robert. Like, during the moment, just him and his challenges just needing surgery, having other medical treatments, having a tube, being underweight. Like, at the moment, like, God, like, what are you doing? Like, my family has been faithful for so long. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, do you hate us all of a sudden? Do we actually do something wrong? Like, we don't, we couldn't see what on earth God was trying to do. But 
By the grace of God, Robert has eventually got better. He's healthy, and he's becoming a country superstar in Virginia as we speak. He has a little bit of a mullet. I'm like, oh, bro, okay, <laughs> crazy. But ever since that situation, my family has seen many more cases of families going through the exact same thing, from babies needing surgery right out of um, being birthed, other medical procedures, struggling to gain weight. And I guess with the dots kind of connecting, we kind of realize that we understand, why made it, we understand why God made us go through those situations. It wasn't just to make us suffer, but it's so we can be a light to other people and begin a brand new ministry. And that's something we never have noticed in the moment when Robert was born. We never in the wildest dream expected that his life will be like this. But yet, looking back, we understand that his life has even much more value to give than just his life alone. He's hope for other people. He's a light. He's an example of people that persevered. A great example of just faithfulness from my sister, from Nathan, from my parents. An example of how to pray for your family. An example on just walking through horrible times. And while that might seem kind of sad and depressing, it's one of the greatest joys of being a disciple is knowing that at the very end, it's all going to be worth it. So we're going to transition into um, having Lena, Jade, and Luke share just about their journeys, their walks with God. So please give them your undivided attention. Hi, everyone. Whoa. Um, my name is Lena Claire Reyes. You may know me as Arthur and Jeanette Reyes' daughter. Go PKM! Woo! Um, I'm also a senior at James Campbell High School. And I... Yay! Go Sabres! Um, and <laughs> I turned a year old as a disciple of Christ on March 19th. Yay! So I'm, I'm a baby. I'm still a baby. Um, so how has my relationship with God gained value over time? Um, Please stick with me. I have four main points. Um, P, priorities. So one thing God has been teaching me is instead of protecting my pride, I should protect my peace. Um, The me before consisted of dissatisfaction, always wanting to be number one, always wanting to be involved in everything, and I thought peace would come when I finished this or was a part of this, all that kind of stuff. Um, I was hard-hearted and... During my studies, all of it was surrendered, all my bottom emotions, being a teenager, being in middle school, oh, it's the worst. Um, Shout out to my recovering perfectionist club. Hi, Shelly. But through the scripture, um, do I realize the real peace and my top priority should be staying close to Jesus. Um, Please turn to Luke 13, 23 to 25. Um, I'll be reading it in the message version because I like that version. So it says, whether few or many is none of your business. Put your mind on your life with God. The way to life to God is vigorous and requires your total attention. God has been shifting my goals from worldly things to prioritizing his word. I don't need to be anyone I'm not, but be something with the guidance of him. Um, Throughout this year, God has been working very hard in changing my anxiety to acceptance. Um, Side tangent. This past Thursday, I was struck with like a bedridden stomach ache. My mom was like, it's Satan, probably, um, I don't know. <laughs> so needless to say, I felt much, ex- I felt much ex- anxiety, but eventually I accepted, if I die today writing this, then so be it. No, <laughs> but I mean acceptance as in accepting God's plan for me. I'm learning that God won't take away pain, but help us find acceptance in it and a solution out of it as he walks with us. One thing that I still keep with me from way back before when I was not a year old um, is the God's Promise plaque, which hangs in my bathroom. Um, I don't know how long we've had it, but it's been there. Um, It says, God didn't promise days without pain, laughter without sorrow, or sun without rain. But God did promise strength for the day, comfort for the tears, and a light for the way. I do have my moments, though, and even characters great as 
characters as great as David does, and overthinking has been quite a thorn in my side. But over time, I've come to accept that my old habits of worrying, for who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life, Luke 12, 25, is not the solution, but being still and praying is. Which connects to my next point, control to trust. I held a vice grip on my goals for the future, but now as the senior writers takes over, I'm trusting God more and more. <laughs> uh, this connects with Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. This, this scripture I just always have in the back of my head. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And although I don't have my driver's license, being a disciple has taught me to yield or slow down <laughs> to get myself aligned with God. Six times a charm, right, guys? Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I didn't have to mention that. I don't know why I did. Um, still a thorn in my side. Um, but lastly, rounding it out, receptiveness to God's word. This is a big one for me because even though I was in PKM, I was in the children's ministry, I was used to just going through the motions, winning the occasional Bible trivia challenge. Um, I found that scripture is different when it's explained to me versus finding it for myself. Um, through my studies, I learned that the Bible was more than just stories about getting eaten by a whale or stuck in a den with lions but a solution to all my problems and God's personal instructions to me. Um, before, I wanted to be fiercely independent, but now I want God's wisdom in every part of my life. Um, I'm still growing up, though. I have a lot to learn. Sometimes I can throw temper tantrums like an up-and-coming two-year-old. Thank you to my mom and dad for dealing with me. Um, but I'm glad to have an amazing support group and an awesome creator to guide me through my way in life. It's by his mercy that he gives us, slash me, a journey to grow and mature in him. The race is not a sprint, but it's a marathon. Um, in summary, uh, this goes out to Blaze, our closer. God has changed my P, priorities and peace. A, anxiety to acceptance. Y, yielding to God's plan. And R, receptiveness to his word. Um, I tried to make it say pray. Right now it just says pay, pay your, but for now, <laughs> that's all I have. Um, I'm going to be passing the floor to the wonderful Jade McMillan Chow. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hello. Um, hi, I am Jade McMillan Chow. I'm Carson's twin. Um, before I was a disciple, I struggled a lot with feeling loved. All throughout middle school and high school, I felt as though no one really paid attention to me. And this has always affected me, and I felt that I wasn't good enough and began hating everything about myself. I know classic teenager symptoms. But I would try so hard just to impress people, which sometimes would hurt others or myself. I was way too desperate for attention and would constantly ta chase any attention I would get from people, often leading me to being manipulated or taken advantage of. I didn't want anyone else to ever feel like they weren't loved, so I became a super peppy, happy-go-lucky person who always had a smile on their face and I would just love on everyone constantly. I never opened up about my problems or ever showed that I was sad to the people around me. For everyone I had been friends with, I felt like it was my responsibility to be their light. I would spend all my efforts bringing them positive vibes, trying to cheer them up, giving them lots of attention and loving them so much, but there was no one who really loved me or cared for me the way I was loving and caring for them. But no one knew what I was going through or how hard it was to keep up the act, and I was always happy, just so I could make others smile, even just the slightest bit. No one gave me the same amount of attention, which really hurt, and I never saw another source of light. And what happens when you leave a flashlight on 24 seven without ever changing the battery? It dies. When the pandemic rolled around in eighth grade, my battery, my battery was able to recharge a bit, but I felt alone. I developed social anxiety over this time and when I joined the teens and we started in-person meetups, I felt alone still. All of my friends that I grew up with had changed and I felt that I didn't belong in the teens. Everybody had their groups, everybody was normal. I believed that nobody would want to be my friend. I only wanted to be around their parents and the adults because I felt that they wouldn't judge me besides all the aunties love kids. Um, <laughs> I felt disconnected from all the girls that I used to be so close to in PKM. 
I started depending more on my relationships outside of the church. I relied on the fickle, temporary relationships of the kids in my school who weren't exactly on the right path. I allowed myself to get pressured by them. Nothing too crazy, but enough to have regrets and some shame. It was easier to entertain these kinds of people with my false notion of love because I was of service to them. I would do anything for them, and they didn't need to do anything in return for me. I loved everyone so much, even if they hurt me or manipulated me. I didn't care at the time. But I only loved them out of my own finite resource of love. Eventually, the immense pressure I felt to keep my act up and allow myself to be taken advantage of was too much for me, and I broke down. I ended many friendships between 8th and 9th grade, and I felt incredibly guilty for doing so. I was so convinced that I let them down by finally putting up my own boundaries that made me feel safer, and I dwelled on these thoughts for a long time. All I wanted was to be happy. I thought that by giving so much of myself, eventually all the seeds I sowed, I would get to reap, and that I'd finally feel loved by these people who might one day see the efforts I made and return the favor. This is not what real love is. I was so concerned about the people in my life, but I was looking in the wrong place. God loves me so much more than I could ever love another person. He is always paying attention to me. There is never a single moment that he isn't caring for me. And it took me seven years to finally understand that. <laughs> Shelley Galang helped me understand what it truly means to love. She taught me about God's love and how I can still love other people by using God's infinite source of love rather than depleting my own little sad bucket of love. <laughs> Through studying the Bible with Shelley and lots of therapy, I was able to start learning how to love myself, how to love others, and how to be the kind of person that I wanted to be. And once I got baptized, I was fully able to better understand God's love for me. And a simple but effective scripture is Psalms 1, 36, verse 2, give thanks to the God of gods, his love endures forever. His love endures forever. It is never ending. It is unwavering. I can still love other people as much as I used to. I just need to use God's love to do so, which is never ending. So in order for me to have a healthy relationships with others and myself. After learning how to love others, I genuinely felt better. I feel more in control of what I can do for myself and others, and I don't feel drained anymore. My relationships with others are less dependent on them to make me feel loved because God loves me and is unconditional. Another scripture that I found that accurately describes how I feel having come to know God's love is Romans 8, 35, verse, verse 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The scripture is just so powerful to me because no matter what happens in life, the hardships, the valleys, and the darkness, the one thing that can pull you out of whatever you're going through is God's love. And there isn't anything in this world, in any world, that could ever make God turn away from us, and he will never stop loving us. And as God's love did for me, it will help things get better over time. Because when you have his love, what else do you need in this moment to feel okay? Thank you. Yeah, let's just adjust this mic real quick. All right. <clears throat> uh, good morning, church. My name is Luke Jones, and I'm a member of the teen ministry. So I've been going to church since I was little, and in doing so, I've heard a lot of amazing stories about people finding their way to church, to salvation, and to God. Uh, for the longest time, I didn't really understand what people meant when they talked about their walk with God. I heard about faith and how there just seemed to be this blind trust and connection between all disciples in the church and with God. I liked to go to church, but even though I knew the scriptures, the stories, and the Bible itself, I didn't really understand it. When I was about 12 years old, I asked to study the Bible. 
At first, I studied because I was scared of death. I heard about God, what the Bible really meant, but since I already thought I knew the Bible, I felt like I was just going through the motions. I didn't feel a change. It felt like I was just reading some old book, one I'd already gone through over and over. Soon after I started studying, something a bit strange happened, the coronavirus pandemic. We started studying over Zoom, and I felt even less motivated to learn about God. I would simply log on and listen. Sometimes I even zoned out because I felt I already knew all the answers to Nick's questions. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> I didn't connect, and I thought, I'll just keep listening and tell him I want to get baptized when I think the time is right. I don't quite get it, but I just want to believe. I had a desire to know God, and yet every time I studied, I just didn't really connect. I don't remember how long it had been, but I still dreaded our sessions. However, one study, Nick challenged me. He asked me a question I hadn't thought of. It caught me off guard. He pointed out that I would pray in the plural, please help us too, and I hope that we can. He told me that prayer was personal, and that really stuck out to me. I started to make prayers more personal, praying for the individual rather than just vague, positive requests. It went from a transaction to a conversation. I felt more connected to God than ever. My faith blossomed from prayer, and I felt that I had someone to rely on, even if nobody else would listen. I kept studying, and I was eventually baptized in September of 2021. Yeah. There was no immediate change. I wasn't suddenly sinless or flawless. Uh, even so, I still felt and feel that connection to God whenever I pray. I'll leave you with the scripture, Jeremiah 29, verse 11 through 14. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Our God is not some far off deity. He is a close and personal God. He truly listens and wants to know you. Thank you. It's okay, if God wanted me taller, he would have made me taller. <laughs> All right, but it's just incredible just to reflect and just see how far these teens have come and how just mature they are in the faith. I didn't write anything for this part. This is all like the spirit of the Lord right now. But, but it really is inspiring, and obviously that's why I didn't want to talk so much. I'm just so interested in just hearing about their growth, what they have learned, because at the end of the day, like, they have so much wisdom, even more than I have at times. I'm like, whoa, you really, you really said that? But it's really just incredible just seeing how much God has just developed them. And it's things that we don't really notice in our day-to-day -day lives. But here having these moments to have them just to be, they just have the opportunity just to give in different ways. You just can't, but you just can't help but be amazed about how far they come, how much they've grown. And just looking so much forward to seeing just them continuing just to serve the church, I hope. And... <laughs> Yes, but continue just to serve the church because from there, like, I don't know, just things, just things just change when you guys get more involved and when we all know where we are spiritually. But as we continue just to praise God, I'm going to uh, close off in a prayer, and then we'll have Blaze and Kaylin do the closing. Yeah, that's right. All right, let's bow our heads. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this time just to... Um, Come together, Lord, and just worship you, Lord. Once again, just allowing the teens to have their opportunity to just shine their light before others, Lord, and most importantly, before you. I can just tell that you're, pro you're so proud of them, Lord, and I'm so proud of them, just seeing how much they are willing to step up and to overcome the many challenges, maybe insecurities they've had beforehand, but still just giving their best shot, Lord, knowing that that is more than enough. And just thank you so much for this time. I pray, Lord, that you continues to develop who they are, their spiritual walks, in that this is not just a one-year thing, but it can happen more often, and the youth can really continue to step up and just showcase their leadership skills to the church and before you. Thank for this time. Amen. Wow. Uncle Mark wasn't lying when he said the closing was the hardest part. <laughs> Yeah, I take some good notes. Uh, but I just want to start off by thanking Kian 
for uh, Amazing Communion today. And isn't it crazy that he's back in town for this? Uh, thank you for sharing and being so vulnerable about how we should live in the light and not the darkness and how we should all be vulnerable that will bring us closer to God. Hi, everybody. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go over some key takeaways that I got from the offering today. So can we give a round of applause for Carson? I always love hearing Carson speak, especially when his topic was to do every action to glorify him. 1 Corinthians 10.31, the verse that he um, brought up was, I liked hearing how he dedicated his time and also um, loved hearing how, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, sharing the offering for this message. Like, I'm so thankful that you got to do it today. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to Gabe for an amazing lesson today. Uh, I think one thing that I definitely pondered on was the question, what has the Lord done for me? And as you said, that your experience, that the value of God's treasure has grown over time because, well, you're a little older than me, but uh, I can already see the value of God's treasure growing in me because he's surrounded me with such amazing people in my life and amazing teen ministry. Uh, I also want to thank Lena, Jade, and Luke just for being so vulnerable and sharing parts of their journey with us on how they got closer to God. Okay, so what I learned from today's lesson, apart from Gabe's, um, was that we need to slow down and think of what God has done for us. So we all start from the starting line, but the journey through the race for each one of us is very different. We can look both directions, which makes us realize how grateful we all are because of where you have come through, what you have gone through. Like Lena said, we have to yield and slow down. Thank you, Lena, Jade, and Luke, for sharing today each one of your views on how Jesus is continuing to work through your lives and where he's brought you today. Uh, finally, we wanted to thank all the people that made this possible, Nick, Soma, Jace, and Gabe for coordinating this and planning this. Uh, we just thank you guys for rehearsing our songs with us and taking times out of your busy schedules to help us so that you know we could put this together and that it could actually be good. <laughs> Can we get a round of applause for our amazing worship team? I also wanted to shout out um, all the parents who drove us to UH on Tuesdays. <laughs> We greatly appreciate you. Uh, finally, thank you to the sound people in the back. You know, they do more than you guys think, so it w none of this would be possible without them. Uh, that's, yeah. Also, thank you to our communion passers. Yeah, yeah thank you. Now, oh, oh, one more announcement. I'm so sorry. This is, I'm not a teen, but there's a new, I, I hope my daughter will be like these teens when she grows up. They're so inspirational to me. But I did have a last emergency announcement from OVC. Um, because of the weather and how it's rained in, you know, the past few days and everything, um, they are concerned about the mud that is, um, going to be tracked out into their concrete area. So if you are parked on the grass, please drive slowly and exit on the actual concrete um, area that you came from. Don't go down the hill and then on this nicer concrete. If you are already parked right here, it's fine. Um, but just drive slow. They said it helps with tracking of the mud like don't rip them kill oh hub and you know just try if, if you're stuck maybe but yeah if if, if you guys can uh, just be aware of that that would be really helpful we really love OVC and we want to you know take care of this space but I'm um, sorry for my last minute announcement okay thank you here's the teens we're gonna close in a prayer real quick everybody bow their heads Dear Lord, thank you for letting us come together today to worship and praise you. I pray for the people who received this message today were hopefully uplifted. 
Thank you, Lord, for all of the people who helped make today possible. And I pray that those who not only were in today's lesson, but also heard today's lesson were encouraged. Thank you for letting us glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs> Can everyone please stand up? generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest. Your name
You are dismissed. If you guys can help out with the chairs, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Have a great Sunday.